morning, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome. I'm Diane from Boho Stamper, and I'm glad that you're spending a little bit of time with me today. We're going to make a, what are we making? An Easter card. Yes, we're making an Easter card today, and I better grab my, um, oh, I didn't add this to the description box. Yeah, but we're going to use Daffodil Daydreams for the Easter Blessings um, greeting on the front. So how's everybody? We're all doing pretty good here. I think today we're going back up to our spring-like weather, so... Um, our sinuses can all just go spastic if they haven't already. Yeah. I laid out my catalogs because I wanted to remind you of a couple of things. First of all, the annual catalog. If you don't have any of these and you need them, let me know. I can get them to you. Um, oh, you know what? This is... Oh, no, that's the new one. I was going to say I have the old mini catalog, but I don't. The annual catalog is going to end in April. And so when that ends, that also means that we have some in colors that are also going to retire. And I just wanted to give you a heads up. I probably should have pulled the colors out just to show you. Um, they were the Fresh Freesia Polished Pink, Pale Papaya, Evening Evergreen, and Soft Succulent. So if those were some of your favorite colors that you've been using, you might want to um, think about adding some of the cardstock or the re-inkers or um, if blends are available in those colors, because I know I don't have blends in all of them. I have a couple, but I don't have them all. But I would start getting those um, in my cart. Yeah, and if you're going to do it, you should probably do it while you can still get free items because celebration ends with February. And so if you wanted to get any of these free items, you know, you could get um, a couple reinkers and a package of your cardstock there and probably hit your $50 and then get some free daffodil paper or, and you know what, I haven't been on there to see if any of this stuff is unavailable. I need to put an order in, but I was kind of waiting until the end of February so I can make sure that I order enough of my gifts that I send out to my customers. So, and um, let me see, the mini catalog, we are using flowering rain boots today. And I think that's in this one. See, I have my daffodil dyes still here, so I remember how to put them together. Yep, flowering rain boots, page 30. Now we have done the rain boot. Oh, you know what? I just laid that card aside too. I had it out here to show you and I put it back over on my other table. So this is the flowering rain boot set out of the new mini catalog. And I only have one of the cards left from our um, video that we did use this in. So this was what we had made, it's been a few weeks ago. And see, if I was really good at this techie stuff, I would have linked the video to this in the description box as well. Maybe I'll try to go back in and find it and add that as well as, um, <clears throat> what else did I say I was going to put on there? I already forgot. See, that's why, that's why I don't have links there for you. All right. And get that out of the way so I don't get ink on it. And, yes, for my customers, when you're ordering, if you please use the shopping code, I'll get an alert that you did order. And for um, your orders of $50 in product or more, I'm going to, oh, let me see where I put them. I have been so busy. I don't even have, well, I do know what we're doing today. I, I don't have a card put together to show you ahead of time, but I know what we're doing. Oh, you know what? They're probably down already in my bin. Anywho, 
they are the adhesive backed hexagons. So they are the pretty little hexagon shapes that we've been adding to our cards. And then with $100 or more in product, you're going to get the little hexagons as well as, is that them? Yep. See, I did put them down in my bin already. There's the hexagon. And $100 or more, you're going to get the hexagons and a take your pick tool, which we use. And mine is, yours would look a lot better than this because it would have like the caps on the ends. <laughs> and um, I think you get a refill putty thing for the end. Um, this unlocks and you can turn it around and use the spatula or add the little bristle brush and I think that's additional. Um, uh, actually, the one piece that I used today, my the bristle brush end would work wonderful. So here is our shopping code, 3ECRK2PB, and that is through February. Okay, let's get going. So I knew today I wanted to use the flowering rain boots. But I wanted to make an Easter card, so I didn't really know if I wanted to use rain boots. So we're going to do the watering can. And I knew that I wanted to use my watercolor pencils. So we're going to use watercolor pencils and um, our, our blender pen. The blender pen has, uh, it's sort of like a glycerin type. Um, you, you, nothing comes out of this. Oh, where'd my little scrap paper go? <clears throat> but because I always keep one over here to wipe this off on. But you can see that it makes like a clear little liquid that dries really quick. And all it does is move our ink around. So I already have stamped and started to color a couple of things. We're going to try one thing here before we go on and I'll show you the rest of how I did the coloring. So I did my tulips. I stamped all of my images because I didn't want to do it in black. It's a sort of like a springy color card. I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. So I stamped in gray granite. Doesn't make it as dark as using the memento. But um, not that this hurts anything, but keep in mind that we're stamping with ink that can also blend with our blender pen. <clears throat> and so this is my tulips that I stamped out already. I stamp them in gray granite and I'm filling them in with my watercolor pencil. I'm actually using Calypso Coral because these are the Stampin' Up pencils that I have. And this is going to um, coordinate nicely. I'm, I'm using Flirty Flamingo and they go together pretty well. So I did start coloring this in, but what I want to see is how this looks different if I stamp it in Calypso Coral and add my pencil. So I'm using the pencil and coloring in pretty much where those little hash marks are on the image. You know, we've talked before about not reinventing the wheel. The artist has <clears throat> kind of already put in there where any shading would be, some medium and dark sh shadows. I always say those words incorrectly. So I guess this is shading. This is not a shadow. So we have dark shadows. Oh, that was a spooky movie when I was a teenager. And lighter shadows. Do you guys used to watch dark shadows? The Barnabas Collins. So once I have colored over those little hash marks on here, I would use my blender pen and go over the watercolor pencil that spreads that ink around and adds very light color to the rest of my image and it blends everything together real pretty. You don't want to use a ton of this because I'm only using this on plain cardstock. This isn't watercolor paper and so if you rub any of this plain cardstock hard enough with any moisture, it is going to pill up. And we're not doing any rough scrubbing on here. so. And then I just wipe my blender pen off on a piece of scrap paper to make sure I get the ink off of there before I go on to the next color. 
the stems and leaves. I would like um, to have used pure pizzazz, but I don't have that. But I do have old olive. Old olive is very close to pure pizzazz. And watercolor pencils are available still in the catalog. Um, this isn't something that's seasonal or new. They're there. And like I said, I have other watercolor pencils as well that aren't stamping up. If you have them, feel free to use those as well. I think the blender pens give us a lot more control over how we're moving this color around more so than a water brush. And I have used the water brushes before, but I do like the blender pens better. I already did the watering can. And what did I use on that? I think, oh, just um, basic gray. Oh, I thought it was black. And so there were my images that I stamped and I just used watercolor pencil. Move them around a little bit with a blender pen. Got a little bit of glitter on there. So let's do these tulips one time on a piece of scrap paper in the Calypso Coral ink and use our pencil and see how different it will look before we cut these out. I don't have them up here. Doesn't need to be a big piece. Is that wide enough? That, and I already set my stamps back in here so I didn't lose them. You notice when I add my stamps to my acrylic block, I don't lay them on here because it's too easy, unless of course you want to move your stamps around. Maybe I want my tulips to be a little different shaped. I can make them go straight across, but if you want them to retain their shape that they are, just lay them upside down on your work surface and pick them up with your block. And it'll keep that nice curve to it, which I'm going to show you lines up perfectly on our stems. But if you want to make a straighter <coughs> row of tulips, maybe you're only stamping um, this section of your leaves and you only want those little bits, you can bend the photopolymer stamps around a bit. They're kind of they're kind of versatile. Okay, so this is stamping it in Calypso Coral. And I'm using that because that's what color pencil I have. Actually, you could probably use your blender pen at this point and move that ink around. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake you all up there. I got you awake, didn't I? If you take your blender pen and just go over your stamped image, I think it's going to move it too. It does. Yeah, not as well though, I don't think. Let's add a little bit of the pencil and see what a difference it makes. As I'm cleaning out some of my craft supplies, we moved from our winter holidays right into spring, which, you know, always happens. And then um, if you've been with my channel and watched before, you know that a lot of times I die cut extra pieces because I like to have options. I'm, like today, I, I have an idea in my head, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm putting my card together. So I have extra die cuts here. So anyways, I've been going through some of my craft stuff. Oh, Lord, I have so many die cuts. I have die cuts from back in the 80s when I was first learning how to use my big shot. Not 80s, I guess. Late 90s, maybe. But extra pieces that I had cut out, and I guess I did it back then, too. One of the options. So I've been putting, you know, like things together. 
bring it in back. And I think I'm going to throw them on my Etsy shop because I think if somebody doesn't have, <clears throat> excuse me, a big shot or a die cut machine, that might be handy for them as they're first getting started. So if you're looking for anything like that, you know, watch for it on my shop there. Um, so there's the difference in when we stamp in the same color of ink and if I stamped in the basic gray and then used my watercolor pencils. There's a pretty significant difference. So if you're looking for a, a brighter image or a more muted color, I'm going with this today because that's what all of my images are cut in or colored in. <laughs> We're going to cut them now. Um, but you have to just kind of figure out which style you want. Do you want them to be brighter colors? Uh, some of my leftover pieces from when we did the boots before, I had stamped in the ink. Uh, these are the daisies. I stamped those in the colored ink. I don't think I did any of those in gray granite or But I just keep those for um, the next cards that I might want to make with that. So let's get these little guys cut out and then we'll worry about getting our card put together. So I'm going to use the coordinating dies. Do I have any washi tape over here to hold these down? <clears throat> I thought I left it over here. Friday I was making, um, I do a paper crafting video on Fridays at 10 and I just use whatever um, supplies I have, not necessarily stamping up. Just trying to use what I have. So I did some St. Patrick's Day cards on Friday. Oh, that's what I was going to link was that other video, huh? No, there was still something else. I have to go back and watch the beginning of this to see what I said I would add. I know, I was going to um, tell you what all of the in colors were. Yeah, that will be going away. So that's kind of exciting and sort of sad at the same time because it also means we're going to get some new colors but it's kind of sad because you know like I like I said I I used pale papaya a lot and in the winter I guess I used a lot of the um, evening evergreen I find myself now reaching for soft succulent when I need a green More than just jade, actually. I think I use the soft succulent more than that. Yep, so I kind of was thinking about this yesterday, what I wanted to do. Usually I'll come up here on um, a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon in the craft room and start planning my card for Monday. Well, Saturday... Hubby and I had a couple errands to run early, and then we kind of just hung out, and he had to, um, he chopped firewood, and, oh, I actually sewed. I had a lot of um, stitching I was working on for my one project, and I was struggling through making a birdie. So we did that Saturday. And then Sunday afternoon, I spent with my lovely daughter-in-law. We went to a bingo fundraiser for um, Volunteer Fire Department. They had a huge turnout. Oh, my goodness. And I thought that we would be gone for, a, a, you know, like three hours or so. There were so many people there. Oh, my goodness. I hope they made, I hope they made some money. But... Um, yeah, we ended up being gone for like almost six hours. So needless to say, when I got back, 
I grabbed a bite to eat and um, yeah, didn't come up to my craft room. Okay, so here are the tulips that we just colored in. You can see they fit right on our little stems. We're going to put those in our watering can. And I might, I think I did this on the other one too. I might trim a little bit off at the bottom of <clears throat> my, my flower stems there so that they're more in the can and they don't look like they're propped on top of it. I have a piece of flirty flamingo. This was an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock that I cut in half and then I scored and folded it in half again to make a four and a quarter by a five and a half inch card base. I want to use some of the Simply Marvelous paper, and this was free out of the Celebration catalog. And I'm going to use some of the um, pink marble, which I think is 40 Flamingo. Yes, it is. But what I wanted to do was to have sort of a, a shaped edge. I didn't want to just cut our regular four by five and a quarter inch piece of designer series paper and stick it on there. So I got my quite curvy dies out. And these four dies have been, uh, these, this one right here has made more snow banks. I use this all the time in the winter for snow. But I don't always use the, um, <clears throat> the leafy vine one. And I don't know why, because it's gorgeous. And so is this pretty little lacy trimmed one. So I played around with this first. I wasn't sure which way the lacy trim would cut. And I added it to my piece of marvelous paper. This way first, yeah. And it and it made my design go on the inside. I, I didn't want that. I want, am I saying this right? Or did I do it the same way twice? <clears throat> did I really? Oh, no, 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 no. I know. It went this way. Right? I don't remember. Oh, my goodness. How awful is that? That can't be right because... Oh, yeah, it is. Oh. I had a full sheet of paper. <laughs> oh, let's not make this hard. And when I die cut this, the design went into the smaller edge of the paper, which I guess I still could use on a card. But um, that leaves all of this area blank. And that's not what I was looking for. So did it again. Turned my die around this way. And now my curvy edge has the design on it where we can see the flirty flamingo in the back. And this is where I kind of stopped with my plan. I also had cut out some of these lattice dies that are in the rain boot dies because I wasn't sure if I wanted to put my watering can in front of a lattice background. Well, I think with this, I'm not going to. So here are three more dies cut out. And I also didn't trim my paper, my marvelous paper yet, because I didn't know how much I actually wanted to be showing over here. Do I want just a small border? I don't think I do. I think I want this, um, I want to see some of this paper. So, then I was afraid when I add my flowers, it might not stand out on the marble paper very well, but really it's not too bad. You know, it's not so detailed, designed, and dark here that, um, like on this one, I think this side, I, I guess it stands out. Um, I just prefer the other side of that paper. This is not my favorite design. I like the marble side. So, do I want to leave a border? No, I want it to come to the end of my paper. So we know that this is five and a half. <clears throat> and I want this part showing. So I'll cut my excess off of the bottom. 
five and a half. And I just turned that upside down so that I could lay the flat edge of the paper against my trimmer. Okay, that's better. So now we need to determine how wide we want this. <coughs> Excuse me, so sorry. Of course, I might want to leave a little bit of the flirty flamingo and stamp my happy Easter directly on there. Let me trim some of that off of the bottom. Just use some paper snips and get a little bit of that white off of there so that the stems fit down into the water can a bit better. And you know what I did before? Did I even use this watering can before, or did I do it in the rain boots? I actually, I cut a little, I just used my craft knife and I cut a little slit into the watering can while the rain boots on the other card. Just to try to get my flowers looking more like they're in the can. Um, what do I want to do here? I'm not happy with this. I'm not being happy. I might just mess this all up. Oh no. There we go. That'll work. Okay. I cut the extra stems off of here and we'll just lay those down on the side of the watering can. Trim the tulips off of. See that's what I meant about maybe only using a part of your stamp set. So these two tulips Will just be a couple little extra ones and this will be our watering can. Okay. We can add our tulips here. We can have these ones just laying down at the side. We can always um, trim our stems to have a little bit of an angled edge. Right there. Add those on some dimensionals so that they'll pop up a little bit. Yeah, I think so. So let so we have to leave enough room over here to add our greeting. And so I think our marble paper needs to be about. Um, let's go. Two and a half. Let's make two and a half and see how that works. This does have, this daffodil one has a real pretty trim also. That might be pretty to take that. And layer the lattice on it. I digress. Squirrel. What did I say? Two and a half. Okay, I need two and a half with my my lattice part cut out to be included. So just 
Just remind yourself that's only paper. Make sure nothing's stuck to the back. That's how I lose stamps. Let's see, I probably could have left it bigger. Yes, darn it. Well, no, I can't. That's a look good. putting together a puzzle, right? Actually, that's not bad. Shall we go with it? Why not? All right, since I'm stamping directly on my card base, that's always a dangerous, dangerous thing for me to make sure that it's straight. And I still might mess it up even with the Stamparatus. Make sure my, my cardstock is going to stay down really well because too often when I pick my Stamparatus lid up, I pull the stamp with, or I pull the paper with it. I think I have another magnet I may even add. Okay, so right about there. Close this up. Oh, I have my, my foam mat under there. I'm going to make myself a little pencil mark so I know where I laid my cardstock. That's why there's so many marks on my little grid paper here. Okay. Because I want to make sure that my Easter Blessings is stamping straight <clears throat> before I put that on my card base. So I'm just going to use, do I want to use Grey Granite or Flirty Flamingo? Let's use the Grey Granite. Grey Granite. <laughs> All right, and I'll stamp one onto my grid paper first and see how this is going to work. Do I need to take my, um, I think I have the foam mat under there. I guess if I get my other stuff out of the way, that will help. Oh, and it looks very straight. My Easter is nice and straight along that line. I think I would double stamp it, and I just felt that hit my... That will work. Okay. Now I can put my card base back in here. And again, I'm just going to line it up in my corner so I know where I had it. <clears throat> I broke one of my magnets. Oh, didn't want to do that. That's how I broke that first one. I just want to hold my... My card down there. All right. Ready? Say a prayer. Please let this be nice and straight. Don't let me mess up my card base. Oh, I did. Look what I did. I pushed too hard. Rookie, rookie mistake. Shame on me. Aw. 
I'm going to cry now. Everything was going pretty good. I know better than that. <clears throat> That was bad. Yeah. I'll grab the other half of this. <clears throat> I'll use that one and I'll have to die cut my greeting out to put on top of that to hide my boo boo. That's what happens when you push your stamp too hard, though. Be gentle. Be gentle, Dee. Be gentle. Yep. Again, nobody says that we have to be a brute about it. See how perfect that worked then just by closing the lid gently. Oh, such a goof. And again, the Easter Blessings is out of Daffodil Daydreams. All right, let's put our little card together. I also hope I'm not going to regret using the gray instead of the flamingo. Oh, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, let's use some adhesive. We'll just use our tape runner and hopefully not rip my paper because I'm also a genius at doing that. my card base there. Okay, now we're going to add this. I'm going to tuck my leaves down inside so I need a little tiny bit of glue along this edge. Uh-huh, there it is. Want my fine tip glue. And I'm just going to layer that down into that little slot that I made. Before I add my watering can, I am going to lay these tulips down underneath here. So I need to... Uh, I guess I don't have to trim the edge. They're going to lay back there just fine. All right. Just dropped it. I think right about there will work. Lovely. And then I'm just going to glue my little watering can down. Again, I'm just using the my fine tip glue. This is um, this one is art glitter glue. You can use whatever kind you like. And we're going to use some dimensionals to pop our tulips up a little bit there. We'll add some pretty, pretty 
ring on the front. Oh, maybe those little hexagons. Where'd those little babies go? Get out my mini dimensionals. Those birdies are looking for some sunshine. They are all over outside. They're so pretty. I have a hard time sometimes staying focused up here on my uh, card because I have this huge tree right outside the window of my craft room and the birds just, there's one right now, good little chickadee. They just sit out there and, and they watch me, I think, while I watch them. So I'm thinking, too, I think I have to get more Easter cards done before Mother's Day cards, right? Okay, hold on here. Maybe one, two, three, one and two stems. And then these two, do I want them up or flat? I think I want them flat so that they look more like they're behind the watering can a little bit. Oh, thank goodness that didn't flip upside down. I would have just about given up. And, all right, where did I put them? Did I put them with uh, cattle rocks? Oh, no, I put them up here with my... Oh, my website. Because these are um, basic black, blushing bride, and just jade. But the blushing bride actually, actually looks really pretty on the flirty flamingo. This is looking a little empty in here. I didn't know if I was going to put it up here. Or, um, I think I'll put it here because it needs a little more something there. A little extra something, something. And there we are. We have a pretty little lace border with some tulips. And I may go ahead and continue on. You're welcome to stay along here if you like. I'm going to do another one, but I'm going to use um, colored ink and blend out with my color rather than with the basic gray and see how, how this works, which one I prefer, if I like the brighter colors or if I like the muted colors. And I'm just going to add a little dab of glue back here because this... Um, quite curvy die edge is quite curvy and it's sticking up. Yep, quite curvy. And I don't know if we still have those, to be honest. Um, we had, we had the quite curvy set in the Christmas one. Let me see if those curvy dies are still in the catalog. I'm thinking they're not because I, I was going to use these ones before and I did not because I didn't think they were available. <clears throat> but I really wanted to make a, a different edge today. 
Maybe I'll use my um, little lattice that I cut out. Um, what am I looking for? Quite curvy. No, the stamp set's not, but let me check these dies. 157. Because sometimes the dies might still be around. No, they're not. Fabulous Florals has a pretty um, has a pretty lattice that could be cut out though, and this is the one I think I'm going to use next week is Birds and More because I have not used that stamp set yet, and I've had it. I keep saying that, don't I? And I forget to pull it out because something else always comes to mind. All right, so here's our card for today. Like I said, if you'd like to just continue on, I'm going to do another one for myself here, and I'm going to stamp with my color ink. So I'll need old olive, and I already have the basic gray out. And I was just using my little scraps of basic white here. And then I think I'll use, um, I kept this so that I could see what these leaves look like. And I will cut my greeting out with a die and add it to that flirty flamingo that I, that I messed up. I don't know if I'm going to do another curvy one or if I'm going to use my lattice. So... Just continue on playing. And it's really going to help if I can find... Oh, there it is. <laughs> My stamp set. Yeah. Need that. I'll mark on that one. Yes, the color is much more intense, I think, with this. Look at that old olive compared to this old olive already. And I haven't even filled it in yet. have my pencil sharpener ready here today since I tend to um, and I probably don't need to but I press on my watercolor pencils rather hard When you're using your blender pens too, you want to kind of use them just like a brush. Keep them going in the direction that you want your ink to move. 
So for example, on the top of this leaf, I don't think I would go sideways on there because there's a possibility of leaving pencil lines or brush lines. So try to keep going in the direction of your design, your image. Yeah, I shouldn't leave all these little things in here. It's kind of a pain. I'm going to get my stamps out. I just have to get... Actually, I'll just get another little zipper envelope. I guess I didn't really expect to have that many um, extra cut pieces, I don't think. granite that worked okay with the basic gray pencil. I really didn't want to use basic gray is somewhat darker and like I said I wasn't really trying to make this a dark card. See, look at that artistic ability there. Scribbling that right over. Nothing fancy. Just adding some watercolor pencil to it. And then blender pen. There it is. Oh, I didn't do the little spout, did I? Actually, that has enough ink on it. I might not want to add any more to that. And if you want to add a little bit more, I know this doesn't show up very well, but it, it is laying down a little bit more color here. Thought I was going to have a sneeze there. It's weird because the blender pens still have a little bit of color on the tip, but it's coming off of my paper, so hopefully there's no color left in there for next time. <clears throat> If you're like me, do you do you tweak your cards after you've already come up with a design? Do you go back and 
do them again and maybe um, change it up just a little bit or do you keep do you keep your your designs the way you plan them you know because a lot of times when you have a design in your head that's not always how the card ends up looking when you're done sometimes they're completely different I mean this is pretty much except that I had planned on that um, curvy lace die cut being on the other side. Can she fit all three? I think she can. Come on. You can do it. I think I moved my water and can die over though. little bit. Oh, you know what? You're not going to see that anyway because this one is going to have the marvelous paper. It covers pretty much the whole front of our card because I wanted to use the lattice. So that'll work out after all. I'm going to make this four and one eighth by five and three eighths then. There we go. Save all my little bits because you just never know. Oh look, I didn't put this back. See, this is how I lose dies. I already put the set down here to put it away. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use those, um, that leafy vine. All right, let's see where we're going with this one. This is just stamp and seal plus that I'm using to adhere my paper. I don't typically like to use liquid glue on designer paper because it is a little bit lighter and sometimes then you can see your glue marks through the paper and I don't really want that to happen. On that side, yep, over here, here. Oh, and I have those hexagon styles left. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what else we have though? We have these.
All right, there's a thought. But first I have to decide what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna try to get these all in here again. I really like it better with just the one grouping. So. I'm not going to worry about trimming off the edge because I'm going to tuck them down into the watering can. Oh, flowers. I turned my flowers off. <clears throat> Those are gonna fit. <clears throat> oh, that's a little longer. Better, better, better. I don't know if it's from doing my embroidery, but I go to squeeze these glue bottles and my hands just don't like it right now. Not quite sure why. Uh, I think I'll Put those on dimensionals again. And so I gotta figure out where my lattice is going to be. Oops, upside down. And I think I do only want to put like three of these. I don't want to make it the whole length. Just do it. Don't think about it too much. Enjoy it. This would have been a good one to I cut out with the adhesive sheet behind it because then you just peel that paper off and it's a sticker. But one of us wasn't thinking about that. I don't know where I'm going to put the third one yet, so let's get um, our extra tulips underneath here. Trying to make sure when I 
uh, line my watering can up that I'm over far enough that my handle isn't on the edge of the paper. <clears throat> And of course, you can make your flowers whatever color you want, especially if you're using a different color of, maybe you're using some of the paper from the daffodils. So you may want to use more of a yellowy tulip or bright red tulips. that glue bottle up for a minute until I get my tulips on and then decide where I want to put my third little diamond shape there and then add another greeting. So if you hung out with me here until the end, you have to let me know which one you prefer. If you like the brighter color flowers or the paler color flowers on our first card that we made with um, gray granite. There we go, that's where I want that. Get um, I don't know what I'm going to die cut my green with. And I guess this one I better do in the Fleur de Flamingo because the only gray on there really is the watering can. So I don't know that I, or maybe I do need to bring that gray out a little bit more. Well, you know, there is... Um, <clears throat> Can only stamp it twice. I'll lay it on there and see which one I like better, right? That's the Flirty Flamingo. That's very light. What did I do? I wonder if this one needs re-inked. And we need something to cut that out with. See what we got laying around quick and handy here. Those blossoms in bloom. Oh no, that was um there might be a label die in here. Let's see. Nope. That was just the Oh yeah, I was going to say I'm missing dies out of that, but I'm not, they're there. But they're not going back in the case right now, no, trying to give me grief. <clears throat> oh good lord, come on, just give me a label die. Hmm? I was 
These are not my labels. There's labels. They will work. I'm pretty sure we can find something add up. Stitched so sweetly. Right. Can't be really big because I did this on scrap paper and didn't leave myself a whole lot of room. How about we just use the little scallop rectangle? That'll work, huh? Just give it a little. Hope I left enough room on the gray. When you get these dies from Stampin' Up, they don't come on a magnetic sheet like this. They come just stuck to a piece of um, packaging paper. But we've found in a lot of the groups that adding them to a magnetic sheet helps save your fingernails, first of all, when you're trying to try them off, because they have that gluey backing stuff on them. And second, it's easy to lay them back on the magnetic sheets and make sure that you can account for all of your dies. End up not missing. Because your die packet will tell you how many dies are in there. So I usually try to count before I put them back on my shelf here and make sure that all my dies have been put away. And here I go again with my options, right? So I have Easter Blessings two times. And I can pick which one I like and save the other. Trying to look at it on my iPad because actually it looks different on there than when I'm looking at it in person. It gives me a different perspective. I almost like the gray better. I think it stands out better. Of course, you can always add little bows or ribbons or whatever you like. Dress up your cards a little bit more if you want to. I want to kind of get that little diamond shape towards the middle of my greeting there. Huh. I have an extra Easter blessings. I can add it with my tulips. So there are a couple options. Yeah. Which one do you like better? Do you like the muted colors? Or do you like the more stand out in colors, the brighter colors. All right, go get you some rain boot dyes. If you stayed until the second card was done, I'm glad you stuck around. Everybody have a great week. Stop back Friday for some paper crafting fun. And then next Monday for Stampin' Up! again, hopefully I'll get that birds and branches stamp set out and figure something. Until then, have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye.